This is The Brink. And remember, folks, to like, comment, and subscribe if you like me and you like what we do here. And if you love it, folks, share this with your friends, share this with your family, share this with people that hate what you believe. Because one, this saves you from having to do the talking. And two, it really helps me out. So please make sure you're sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. So the media was foaming at the mouth to run cover for Hamas instead of just, I don't know, waiting for evidence and being unbiased. And now, because of their actions, we may be headed toward unmitigated disaster. Take a look at the U.S. Embassy in Beirut. And you know, it kind of reminds me of this. They're the questions the president cannot escape. Why do we still not know what went wrong in Benghazi? And I don't know. I guess it just feels like every time there is a Democrat in charge, we see more embassies and consulates uh, get burned down, get attacked, be targeted. I mean, we saw it more than a dozen times under the Obama administration. And do you know why the U.S. Embassy in Beirut was attacked? And no, it is not because it's the upcoming 50th anniversary of the Beirut Barracks bombing. No, it was because corporate media was basically running cover for Hamas. So there was an explosion Tuesday at a Gaza hospital and reportedly a few hundred people, including children, were killed. That is just, you know, heartbreaking news. But outlets like CNN, Reuters, the Associated Press, they immediately took the word of Hamas, a terrorist organization, to frame the bombing or the explosion as the Israelis' fault, despite the IDF denying that the bomb was theirs and saying that, hey, look, actually it was a terrorist rocket that misfired. But what these corporate media outlets decided to do was they headlined their piece within a moment's thought and framed their headlines and leads as if it was matter of fact an Israeli airstrike that caused it without any shred of evidence beyond what Hamas told them. Hamas, a terrorist organization. Now, of course, they knew that this later was a bad idea and was wrong because they stealth edited their pieces. So take CNN. They originally headlined their story as Israel hits hospital and school in Gaza as blockade cripples healthcare system. Then they later changed it to say Israel accused of yada, yada, yada. You see the difference there? But you know what the effect of this, you know, knee jerk coverage reaction is by the media? It's that video you just saw of the embassy in Beirut. It is the leaders of Jordan and Palestine pulling out of their scheduled meeting with President Biden. It is this in New York City. New York City, which, mind you, has one of the largest Jewish populations in the world. It is people around the world who read the original headline, because why else would they go back to check and see if the headline's been altered? And they see, okay, Israel, you know, targeted and bombed a hospital, and now I hate Israel, despite the fact that none of these outlets had any further evidence to support their headline and their lead, besides blindly trusting the word of terrorist. Now, this is just a basic rule of thumb going forward here for every journalist and every outlet. And I think this is, you know, easy to follow. Don't trust a terrorist organization that just kidnapped babies and Holocaust survivors, holds them hostage, slaughters young adults at music festivals, and allegedly burns babies. Because there are real consequences and dangers to reporting stuff like this. Speaking of issues with reporting, uh, please just have a look at what Axios wrote. So apparently, the border is more fortified than it has ever been. And to say it's open, that's a myth. And now, how does Axios back up its claim? Well, it cites an increase in border patrol agents from 1992 to 2023. So in 30 years, we've increased the border, which means, yes, it is super fortified. Then Axios says that there are border walls and fences to keep migrants out, as if we're supposed to feel bad about that. But then they fail to mention that the Biden administration actually threatened Texas with legal action if they didn't remove the floating barriers and have their fences cut down. I mean, we all saw this video footage from the Daily Caller News Foundation. And if you didn't, have a look. And then, of course, the article ends by saying that Republicans have, quote, little evidence to support the claim that the border is open. 2.3 million encounters in fiscal year 2022, more than 1.8 million between October of last year through August of this year. Enough evidence. 
Case closed. I want to come back to a topic that really was and is of utmost importance. So uh, remember a few weeks ago, New Mexico's governor tried to put a so-called, you know, public health order in place that would strip Albuquerque residents of their Second Amendment rights and in part suspend the right to carry a gun at a park and a playground, right? You know, these public spaces that are paid for by taxpayers. Well, a judge just denied gun rights group requests to block that restriction. Our judicial system is simply meant to adjudicate the law in the frame of the Constitution, right? Protect constitutional rights. That is literally the purpose of it. And yet here we have a judge who is ruling in opposition to the Second Amendment. And I think it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be controversial to say that a judge should always side with whatever side is closest to the Constitution. So in this case, in the topic of the Second Amendment, they should say that in a moment of uncertainty, they would rather err on the side of liberty than tyranny. And then down the road, if something changes and they have more time to look at it, more evidence, that can change. But when they're issuing injunctions and whatnot, always, always err on the side of individual liberty and not government restrictions. And this is what is so wrong with our country because I think that there has been a fundamental disconnect between uh, these judges and these politicians who forget that they take an oath to uphold the constitution and to defend our rights, right? We elect these people to defend our rights and here they are trying to strip us of them. Uh, it's just mind boggling that we started as a country that wanted limited government and, and outlined, hey, this is what the government literally can't do. And now here we are where we have an ever expanding government that is telling us, hey guys, actually, this is what you can't do. That is not how this was intended to work. Folks, we will have more tomorrow on The Brink. Also, if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, we released an interview with Ken Paxton, the Texas Attorney General. Great interview. We really talked about, honestly, the fascinating and frightening reality of Texas possibly turning blue. So definitely make sure you look at that. It's on The Brink's page. Share it with your friends, and we'll see you tomorrow.